Pick the most valuable. Okay, what this is is a brooch, okay. right? It dates to about 1920 to about 1940, that neck of the woods. And then if you pull it apart, you actually can put a clip on each shoe. Oh, is that what this for? Clip on each shoe. You okay. can also clip it if I had a cardigan on, uh -huh. each side of the cardigan, okay. with your poodle skirt right. and your dance card exactly. at the USO. <laughs> and you could have one side of the cardigan and the other, and you don't have to button it up. So you can let everybody see the girls a little bit. <laughs> I'm Italian Catholic. That's as dirty as this gets. Doesn't get any dirtier than this, guys. But that's what this is. So it's multifunctioning. It's rhinestones, filigree. This particular piece, as I said, dates 1920s to the 1940s. Value on it, about $35. It's nice. Costume jewelry can be valuable. So you want to hold on to it. Vicki, how did you acquire this set? Sale. You bought this at a garage sale years ago? Yes. Maybe 40 years ago. Maybe 40 years ago you bought this at a garage sale. Well, what I'm looking for, what I'm looking at here is a 18 karat go solid gold, Italian made, what's called classical revival piece. Let's see if I can get this to do this here. And then this particular piece has its own has its own case. And these pieces would actually attach here. There's actually all hand carved from Italy, all different types of figures on these cameos. So these are hand carved, really beautiful. Hand carved, exquisite, exquisite. Um, in rose gold, which has a high copper content, yellow gold with a little bit of a high copper content, rose color. And these particular pieces date to about 1880 in what is known as the Renaissance or Classical Revival style. Now, these pieces will show you all different mythological figures. You have, of course, the goddess of love and fertility. You have here Apollo and Artemis. You have here, of course, um, these particular figures here where you have Cupid and Daphne. You have, um, oh gosh, the whole group. Then you have these pieces, which actually are the 22 karat gold and 18 karat gold setting, the 22 karat gold to attach each one. They're really quite beautiful. As I said, they date to the latter part of the 1800s, between 1865 and about 1885, and value on this set in its original case, this original 19th century case, this set has a market value today of about $3,500 to $4,500. What did you pay at a yard sale, even if it was 40 years ago? Ten. $10. You remember it was 10 <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing what's out there. I mean, this is a spectacular piece. I don't care what you know or don't know about the work of art. If someone hands, if someone shows you this in your brain, somebody just goes, that looks like gold. I mean, you know, for 10 bucks. But again, a lot of the times it was just trying to get rid of things. Just trying to get rid of it. You know, sometimes it's just a situation that might be dire for a family as well. Really quite beautiful. It goes this way. And to have the original box increases value by about 5%. How did you acquire this? So you're saying it's European. I don't think it's European, hon. Came from your mother-in-law? Yes. Okay, so this particular image is an image of a satyr, right? Um, the whore, it's a, you're calling it a white and gold brooch clip, okay? Well, this particular piece would have been used on shoes, or actually to hold together a cardigan sweater in the 1940s or 50s, okay? So it looks like a brooch or clip, but it's not really used for that typically. You can also put it, I want you to think of like a pair of flat shoes and you can just put it there and make a little design. So you can use the same black flat shoes, but you can make them look different. That was a way in, during the war years that we sort of didn't have to buy all different shoes. Now we buy a million pairs of different shoes. Um, this is ceramic. And this is enameled, basically ceramic enameled on top. And then this is painted gold leaf. So you usually have two. You only have one? Just one. Value on this one is going to be about $15. And then you have 
An actual brooch, Bonita. This actual brooch is black and silver tone. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this. This is a base metal. This is a lead type metal, and it has an embossed or impressed image of a horse on it. This piece dates to about 1903 to about 1915. And this particular piece is in a style that was very popular in France during that time period. She was from France. She was from, from France. Belgium. Okay, from Belgium. So it is probably French for her lineage and value on this particular piece, which has, again, this embossed ceramic, I'm sorry, this embossed um, element of the black against the, the silver. The silver is there, and then they sort of stencil on the black areas. So it's sometimes called black relief. Right, or black figure because the area that's black is actually the figure or the opposite. The area that silver is actually the figure. Value on the piece I have in my hand about $125. It's French and again it dates to again the early 20th century. So how did you acquire this? Oh, I got it from my mother-in-law for driving her around. That was nice. I'm sure you got it more than just for driving around. Your, um, was your mother-in-law of English or British descent? Irish. Irish. Irish, English, Irish. that neck of the woods, right? Why do I know that? Well, if I look at this piece and I can see the carvings, and the method of carvings and the iconography or the image says, gee, I'm somewhere in the British Isles. Right? So that's basically where this piece comes from. It is set in a gold overlay or a vermeil, which basically means it's been dipped in gold. The piece dates any time between 1840 and about 1870. Is that possible in the family history? Value on the piece in my hand, about $1,500. It's a beautiful cameo. Do you wear it, Ken? No, no, not lately. Not lately. <laughs> to your CPA meetings and such? No? All right. It's a nice piece, a really nice piece. It's either from your grandmother's jewelry box or your aunt's. So, you know, you're just hunting around in people's jewelry boxes. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> it's not something I would keep. I'd go take it from their jewelry box, and then I'm not keeping it. Come on. So is it costume? It looks like it's me. Looks like it's you. Why? What's wrong with it? It's too shiny. It's too shiny. Yeah, it is too shiny and it is costume and all of these pearls are fake. Okay. They're made of plastic. Okay. But it's kind of nice. So if you're going to steal from aunt or grandma, get the real stuff. <laughs> That's the lesson here. This particular piece, let's show you why it is costume. Well, they are individual elements all the way through. So each one of these has an individual element, right? They are made in mass numbers. And then what happens is when you turn it over, they can just put anything inside that individual element. So there's a cast, right, a setting that's cast in a base metal and inexpensive metal. They, of course, paint it or gild it. They make it look like gold, right? And then what they do is they can put a pearl in here, or they can put a garnet in here, or they can put a little piece of turquoise in here, and they replicate it, but they make all different types of bracelets. That bracelet probably dates sometime to the 1940s. Value on that bracelet is going to be just about 60 bucks. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, they carved into this piece, and then they made it look like there was a bug in it at one point. That piece is a piece of plastic. Okay. How much did you pay for it? This one's worth about $40. I think I paid 50 You think you paid 50 for it. Okay. So if you had an original piece of amber naturally developing this particular size, you'd probably be somewhere around $250. If you were to purchase it in a place like Copenhagen or Helsinki or into the Baltics area where a lot of amber is sold. Right. Um, the base metal, not all that expensive. I'd add another 20 bucks for the chain. If it says silver as opposed to sterling, that usually means that it's 600 to 800 parts per thousand pure. Sterling silver means it's 925 parts per thousand pure, right? So what you have is you have pieces that are in that 600 to 800 range, and then you have a carnelian set inside. That's what this stone is, a carnelian. Relatively nice quality. You know, it's not a fake like the piece of scrimshaw. It is indeed... Bazinga. <laughs> He's cute though, he doesn't mind, right? So they were all purchased together? I'll assume. You'll assume? Yeah, they're not together, they're not a set. They're similar, but not a set. This partic these particular pieces are Asian, these two, the ring and the bracelet are Asian, and they in fact date to about 1925 to about 1930. Those two pieces, the ring is about $100, the bracelet is about $150. But this particular piece is not. 
This particular piece actually is a piece made in the United States with Asian forms. So at one point, something got put together, in fact. This piece is worth about $200. So if you did keep it as a set or you decided to sell it as a set, it's valued anywhere between. You can see the darker color on the carnelian piece is higher quality on the necklace than the bracelet or the ring. And value on the whole set, I would say about $350 for the set. Don't break up the set. Make sure the set is maintained. So this particular piece is actually, it would be worn on a bracelet. It could be worn on a necklace, but usually these are, these are charms for a bracelet, like a charm bracelet. Did she have a charm bracelet? I want to know if I'm related to those people because of the era, or are they like your innocent ancestor you get when you buy pictures? <laughs> right. So, could these be people in your family? Yeah, because the soldiers have uniforms. Well, here's a couple of things that are happening here. There are three different soldiers. I think there's only three in here, right? I thought there were four of them. Well, is there another one behind this one? I can't really get my nail. There's one, yeah, that you can get. There it is. That's what I was trying to do. Okay, so these pictures of these gentlemen are in, okay, no. This one is in a World War One, World War One German uniform. This next person is in a civilian's uniform from about, a civilian's coat from about, I would say, uh, 19, uh, 1880. This person is in a uh, Franco-Prussian War, which is 1871, French uniform, and this guy over here is actually in a Franco-Prussian War. So, is anybody German in the family? Okay, so these could be German, these could be your German ancestors, okay, that are, but basically they're in different uniforms from slightly different times. So, from 1871, the Franco-Prussian War to 1873, or from World War One, which... Okay, so that could be him, that would be this guy. Yay, yay, yay. Right here, the front. Well, it's the first one. When you open the book, it's page one, if you look at it that way. It's gold filled, it's not 14 karat gold, excuse me. It's gold filled, and actually you would, it would be like a locket, only instead of a locket that's round, it's like a little book. And it even has a way to close it, the way in which you would close a little Bible. On the front of it, is indentation and it is gold filled, so it's brass with gold overlay. Value on it about $150. So I'm looking at what? Probably 2.5 to 3 total carat weight. Have you had it weighed? I just had the uh, pen, I made it into a pen because I don't wear a stick pen. Okay, so it was a stick pen. Yes. And you said, I'm going to take off those diamonds, I'm going to put it onto a pen, and I'm going to wear the pen. Right. right. You put it on a chain, which is a newer chain, maybe from the 80s, 90s, 2000s. And the pendant, what did it cost you to have it made into a pendant? 800 bucks? $100. $100 to have it made into a pendant, so all they gave you here was actually a gold loop. Yes. Okay, fine. It's secure, it's fine, it's done by a professional jeweler. Yes. The pendants uh, and the diamonds actually date to about, I would say, 1910, 1920, somewhere in there. Is that right? Exactly. Right with your family history. That's right. This particular piece in my hand has a secondary market value somewhere around $2,500 to about $3,500 around your neck. So when you're not wearing it, it goes in a safe or a safety deposit box or it stays around your neck, right? That means, you know, you play tennis or golf and you're taking a shower in the ladies' locker room, don't take it off. Right? So, we're in good health. That's a nice piece. Thank you. Very nice, very nice.